Sinaix Shikwepnik Tanaha Silks for First Nations. This is their land. Hi, everybody. It's Vanessa from the library, and I'm here with Hershey. And guess what? Sasha's going to read us another story. Have you been out in your gardens gardening? I know that I have. It's been wonderful weather for it so far, and now we're getting some rain, so the seeds are happy. And um, that's what Sasha's story is going to be about. It's about the curious gardener. So I will sing our welcome song, and then we'll go over to Sasha. I'm in the mood for singing. Hey, how about you? I'm in the mood for singing. Hey, how about you? I'm in the mood for singing, singing the whole day through. Hey, hey, what do you say? I'm in the mood for that today. Hey, hey, what do you say? I'm in the mood for that. I'm in the mood for stories. Hey, how about you? I'm in the mood for stories. Hey, how about you? I'm in the mood for stories, telling stories the whole day through. Hey, hey, what do you say? I'm in the mood for that today. Hey, hey, what do you say? I'm in the mood for that. Well, that didn't wake Hershey up, but maybe the story will. So here's Sasha with a story about gardens. Hello everyone, my name is Sasha and I'm here today to give you a little read you a story called The Curious Gardener by Peter Brown. Published brought by Little Brown and Company. The Curious Gardener. There once was a city without gardens or trees or greenery of any kind. Most people spent their time indoors. As you can imagine, it was very, it was a very dreary place. However, there was one boy who loved being outside. Even on drizzly days while everyone else stayed inside, you could always find Liam happily splashing through his neighborhood. It was on one such morning that Liam made several surprising discoveries. He was wandering around the old railway, as he did from time to time when he stumbled upon a dark stairwell leading up to the tracks. The railway had stopped working ages ago, and since Liam had already always wanted to explore the tracks, there was only one thing for the curious boy to do. Liam ran up the stairs, pushed open the door, and stepped out onto the railway. The first thing he saw was a lonely patch of color. Wildflowers and plants were the last thing he expected to find up there. But when he took a closer look, it became clear that the plants were dying. They needed a gardener. Liam may not have been a gardener, but he knew that he could help. So he returned to the railway the very next day and got to work. The flowers nearly drowned and he had a few pruning problems. But the plants patiently waited while Liam found better ways of gardening. As the weeks rolled by, Liam began to feel like a real gardener and the plants began to feel like a real garden. Most gardening, gardens stay in one place, but this was no ordinary garden. With miles of open railway ahead of it, the garden was growing restless. It wanted to explore. The tough little weeds and mosses were the first to move. They popped up farther and farther down the tracks and were closely followed by the more delicate plants. Over the next few months, Liam and the Curious Garden explored every corner of the railway. Spending his spring and summer and autumn with the garden, Liam's time on the railway was finally interrupted by winter. 
Heavy blankets of snow fell in the city that, that season, and for the first time since he'd become a gardener, Liam could not visit the plants. Rather than waste his winter worrying about the garden, Liam spent it preparing for spring. After three cold months, the snow finally began to melt, and Liam rolled his new gardening gear over to the railway. Winter had taken a toll on the garden, but thanks to Liam's planning, his handy new tools, and a little help from the sun, the plants soon awoke from their winter sleep. The garden had always wanted to explore the rest of the city, and that spring it finally it was finally ready to make its move. Once again, the tough little weeds and mosses set out first. They popped up farther and farther from the railway and were closely followed by more delicate plants. The garden was especially curious about old, forgotten things. A few plants popped up where they didn't belong. Others mysteriously popped up all at once. But the most surprising thing that popped up were the new gardeners. Here, everybody's enjoying all the gardens. Many, many years later, the entire city had blossomed, but of all the new gardens, Liam's favorite was where it all began. So there we have Liam now with his kids and his partner. And look at the city now. And I'm gonna go back and compare it to what it once looked like. That's what it is now, and that's what it was. So it's amazing that what the power of one person can do to make a big change. Thank you all for joining me today at Storytime. Hershey, did you love that story or what? That sure made me think about where I could plant a garden. And now it's time to say goodbye. So we'll sing the goodbye song. Well, the goodbye train is leaving. See you soon. Choo choo. The goodbye train is leaving. See you soon. Choo choo. The goodbye train is leaving. The goodbye train is leaving. The goodbye train is leaving. See you soon. Choo choo. We'll say goodbye to Vanessa. See you soon. Bye, friends. We'll say goodbye to Hershey. See you soon. Woof woof. We'll say goodbye to Sasha. We'll say goodbye to all the gardeners. We'll say goodbye to the library. See you soon. See you next time.